This will be lecture two of pregnancy growth and development. We'll be discussing the second and third trimesters as well as going back and picking up some of the more minor details from developmental biology. During the second trimester you're growing really fast. Um, everything's basically set up in the first trimester so we're seeing increases in size and the further development of organs as they go from a rudimentary form into a more adult form. Uh, some of the key events during this phase is the placenta begins to take over and secrete the progesterone. This is not the job of the corpus luteum anymore so it, go ahead, it goes ahead and deteriorates. Um, HCG levels start to decline and growth and activity are, are far up in the fetus. If you take a look at months four and five uh, you can see you're starting to basically look more human. Um, the GI tract is fully developed, the kidneys are attaining their typical structure. Limbs reach near final proportions, so everything's basically looking more and more like a miniaturized adult form. At the very end of month five, you know, 190 millimeters. During the third trimester, it's marked by rapid growth. Um, you have fetal activity early on that you're going to be able to feel, but as you progress towards the end of the third trimester, the space is just basically used up and fetal activity may actually decrease. This is going to terminate with uh, parturition, that is birth, it's a nice name for it. The female will be feeling the effects for sure by the third trimester as the abdominal organs become compressed and displaced as the fetus grows to you know, around 14 inches or so and 7 pounds, if we're saying a perfect world. Now this link here um, to babycenter.com has got some outstanding videos that go over the first few days and fertilization, first, second, and third trimesters. Um, if you go to that link, you'll see quite a few really cool videos and 3D animations that, that play pregnancy out in full detail. This is a closer look at the end or the third trimester as you can see at birth you're starting to look like a, a miniaturized adult. Um, bone marrow becomes the sole site of blood cell formation during this time. If you're a male the testes are descending into the scrotum. You know they start off as abdominal organs much like ovaries. Myelination here, I didn't mention that, is actually uh, starting and you're still not fully myelinated uh, when you're born. All your peripheral nerves for sure and the Babinski reflex um, has a differing effect on an adult uh, when you run a, a rod at the lateral aspect of the foot the toes will curl in and on a infant they'll actually fan out and open and that's due to the incomplete myelination. In developmental biology there are three major germ layers. We are triploblastic. We have an ectoderm, an endoderm, and a mesoderm. Uh, the ectoderm is going to give rise to the skin and the nervous system. Endodermal cells are going to give rise to many of our epithelial linings, the digestive tract, your genital system, and the mesoderm is forming basically everything else, muscles and bones and, and things of this nature, major organs. At 17 days we basically look like a seed, um, but you can clearly see the three germ layers. Uh, the ectoderm here, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And it's these cell layers that are going to give rise to all the body parts and basically form a human. Now at 17 days, you know, it looks like you could basically you know, plant us in the ground and we grow from there. 20 days in, this is going to all start to fold in. This neural groove here, these two ends are going to come together and actually touch and, and your fetus is going to start taking shape slowly but surely. Uh, these somites are going to start forming organs and ribs and things of this nature. I'll show you a picture of them here in just a second. 22 days, you see you've got the neural crest, this neural tube, and that neural is fully complete, um, sort of looking like a jellyfish at this stage. Looking at the end of four weeks, now this, remember this is where a heartbeat is beginning. You're starting to see the, the coelums or the true body cavities. Uh, the gut lining, so we're starting to partition the inside out to where the organs are going to be in adult form. This is a nice view of all three layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, and telling you what they're all forming, like famously the ectoderm, the brain and spinal cord, hair, nails. Uh, the mesoderm's broken up 
you know, our somites break down into sclerotome and dermatome and myotome, telling you what each one of these um, is responsible for producing intermediate mesoderm, kidneys, gonads, and be the, the sex organs like the ovaries and the testes. So this is not something you have to commit to full memory, but do get the idea that we are derived from three major germ layers, and they give rise to specific sections and tissues and regions of the body. And the study of how this all happens is, is where stem cells is focusing. And if you learn you know, what causes a heart to form, then hopefully you can recreate that in lab and, and maybe one day in transplant waiting lists and things of this nature. It's another view of it if you're looking. You can see the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm here. This is a five-week embryo. What I want you to get out of this slide is everything's developing from a tube. As you can see, this is, this is a continuous tube from the mouth all the way to what's going to be called the anus. And you see umbilical cord here, which is, you know, no longer going to be there in adult form. But pancreas, liver, stomach, your lungs, these are branches off this single continuous tube that are ultimately going to fully form. In five weeks, the liver is quite large already in the embryo. It's one of the structures very easily seen. This is a, a nice image. During development, um, the determination of male and female is mediated by hormones. We basically begin, um, I guess for lack of a better word, as female. We have an opening. The gland's penis in a male will retain a large size, and the urogenital folds will close together. The labo-scrotial folds will become the scrotum, and over time, uh, you know, by the end of the first trimester, you'll be forming the male sex organs. Now, if hormones lead you the other direction, then the gland's penis reduces, the urogenital folds do not close, and the labioscrotal folds become you know, the labium majora minora, uh, the external genitalia on the female. The glands is greatly reduced in size, becomes what's known as the clitoris in the female. I know many of you have probably heard of oxytocin. Um, it's a very powerful hormone that they'll sometimes give a version known as pitocin in a drip to stimulate pregnancy. Um, the way oxytocin works is it stimulates uterine contractions, but it is one of the few positive feedback loops in the human body. Uh, by stimulating uterine contractions and stimulating the placenta to make prostaglandins, it actually causes itself to produce even more of it through a positive feedback loop. So the contractions will feed through and cause more oxytocin be released, which will in turn cause more contractions, which causes more oxytocin, which causes more contractions. And the next thing you know, you will have one contraction after another after another, and they'll just all run together, and this uterus will squeeze, and the baby will be born. Lecture three is going to cover some of the effects of pregnancy on the mother, as well as contraceptions if you do not want to experience any of these effects.